Kia ora and welcome back. Um, in this video we're going to take a look at another type of subgroup that we can build out of any group and it's quite similar to the centre that we talked about last time. So remember that the centre of a group was the set of elements that commuted with every other thing in the group. Um, and it always included at least the identity and sometimes more things than that. Now the centralizer, and it's quite easy to get these confused, is a similar type of subgroup except it applies to individual elements. So the idea behind the centralizer is you take an element A in your group and then all things that commute with that particular element are called the centralizer of it. So all things that commute with A is the centralizer of A. Okay, so for example, if I took the identity and everything in the group commutes with the identity, and so the centralizer of the identity is the entire group itself. Okay, so the we, we need to prove that this thing is a subgroup, but before we do that, let's put down the slightly more formal definition and then we'll go from there. Right, so here's the definition, uh, and it's very much what we just said. Let A be a member of G, the centralizer of A and G, which we write as capital C of A, the set of all elements in G that commute with A. And sometimes it's good to write these things in set notation because that makes it even clearer what we mean. So the key point to fix in our heads is that a centralizer applies to an element of the group, whereas the center, which is similar-ish, applies to the entire group. Okay, so for any element, we can build the centralizer. Okay, and just like with our previous, uh, with the center, um, we've claimed that it's a subgroup, so we'll write that down as a theorem. Again, it's 3.6 in Galleon. Um, C of A is a subgroup. So we actually need to confirm this before we can go and make use of any subgroup information about it. Okay, and again, the proof is almost the same as that for the center. It's gonna follow the same kind of structure. So we'll use the two-step subgroup test. And remember, before we use any of these subgroup tests, we need to show that the set is non-empty, which usually means showing that the identity in it is in it. So again, when we have the definition of a set being given by some particular rule, and i.e. membership in the set requires that the element G commutes with A, we just need to test that the identity has this property. And if it does, we know it's in the set. So first off in the proof, um, we'll check that E is a member of the centralizer of A. Okay, so we've got our element A, some element from a group, um, and we're trying to verify that the centralizer of that element is a subgroup. Okay, so to check that the identity is a member of the centralizer, we just need to check that it commutes with A. So let's just do that. E A quite clearly is just equal to A, which equals A E. So yes, it does indeed commute with A. So E is a member of the centralizer of A. Okay, let's put a little text just so we know. Okay, so that's like step zero of our subgroup test. We all, before we can apply these subgroup tests, we need to verify the set's not empty. We've done that, and like I've said before, the usual way to do that is to verify that the identity is in it. Okay, step one, closure. Usually we do closure before inverses, um, just because it is a bit, usually a bit more convenient that way. So this one, we need to take two elements of our centralizer, and then we need to show that if we compose them together using the group operation, then we won't leave the centralizer. Want to show, often a good habit to write down what it is you want to show. So we want to show that GH times A equals A times GH. Okay, so if we can show that, we know that GH commutes with A and we're good. So let's just start on the left and work through. So GH A, again, I'm gonna just take the parentheses out because we're quite happy with associativity now. So we'll just let that, let that be. So remember, the thing we're gonna make use of is anything in the centralizer, this is true. So I can always, for any element that's in the centralizer, push A onto the other side of it if it's convenient for me. So I'm gonna do that here because with H A, so that will be G A H. Okay, can you see what happened there? I made use of my highlighted thing just to switch around um, H A and A H like this. 
maybe you can see what's going to happen next. Um, next up, I'm going to do the same thing again, but now I'm going to do it here. So I'm going to switch the A to the other to the left of the G, so that will be equal to A G H, and that's actually all we had to do. So we'll give that one a little tick as well. And finally, inverses. So I'll say let G be a member of our group, uh, of our centralizer, sorry. Want to show G inverse is also a member of our centralizer, i.e. that G inverse A equals A G inverse. Okay, so let's just start for variation. We'll start on the right. Okay, now what it is we want to do, again, we want to make use of what I highlighted up here. Okay, so to do that, I need to have a G beside my A. And I, currently I don't, I have a G inverse. So like we've done previously, we'll use our mathematical trick of multiplying by the identity. And because I want to stick a G essentially here, I'll multiply by G inverse G on the front. Remember G inverse G, that's just the identity, so I won't do anything. So there's no harm in doing that. And it serves the purpose of putting a G beside the A, which is what I want. So hopefully you're happy that those are the same thing. And from here, that was a little creative step in this part of the proof. From here, it's just a, a matter of following the mechanics. So now I can switch around G A into A G. Okay, I've made use of the fact that G is in the centralizer. And then finally, I can get rid of the G, G inverse here on the right. And because it's just the identity, that will be equal to G inverse A. Tick. Okay, so we've satisfied all of the um, all of the things that we need to for the two step two, uh, the two step subgroup test. So we can conclude that it is in fact a subgroup. Therefore, our centralizer of our element A is a subgroup of G. Right, so let's, let's test this uh, test this idea out in the same context as we did for the center. Let's look at the set of invertible two by two matrices with real coefficients, and we want to find the centralizer of this particular matrix one 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 zero. Remember, centralizer always applies to particular elements of the group, not to the whole group of itself. So this will be a subgroup that's associated with the particular element one 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 zero that matrix. Okay, so let's just set up a general matrix so x equal a, B, C, D, where we know because it's a member of GL2R, A, D minus B, C is determinant, is non-zero. Okay, now we require X, A to equal A, X. Okay, so let's just figure out what that is. X, A is going to be A, B, C, D times 1, 1, 1, 0 which will equal a plus b, a, uh, c plus d, c, and ax will equal 1, 1, 1, 0, times a, b, c, d. And just doing a matrix multiplication, we'll get a plus c, um, we'll get B plus D, we will get A, and we will get B. Right, these things must be equal. So that means corresponding entries must be equal. So my first one, let's just write 1, 1 here so we know where we are. Row 1, column 1, I get A plus B equals A plus C which implies that B equals C. Okay, so every can, every position in my matrix is going to give me one of these types of equations. Um, row two, column one, that will give me, row one, column two even. Let's write this down the way I've got it. Okay, so first row, second column, I'll get A, is equal to B plus D. Right, 
which is also equal to c plus d, because we know that b equals c. Um, in fact, we'll just leave it as b plus d, we'll take b as our primary one, which gives us d equals a minus b. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and write everything in terms of a and b at the moment. I've got c in terms of c is equal to b, d is equal to a minus b, a and b are themselves. Um, let's just see if our other ones give us anything useful. 2, 1, that's going to give us c plus d equals a, which is one we've already got. Doesn't give us anything new. We already know b and c are the same, so nothing new from that one. And finally, 2, 2, that says b equals d. b equals c, sorry, which again we already knew. Okay, so we don't have anything additional from these ones. So our two key pieces of information is that c equals b, or b equals c, and d equals a minus b. So our matrix x, therefore, is equal to a, b, b, a minus b. Okay, and we require for the, the determinant is non-zero. So a, a minus b, minus b squared equals a squared minus a b minus b squared is not equal to zero. Okay, so any matrix of that form is in the centralizer of C of 1110. So we could write that, I guess, just to be complete. Centralizer of our element is the set of all matrices uh, X, a set of all matrices A, B, B, A minus B, subject to the constraint A squared minus A, B minus B squared is non zero. And that, as we've proven on the left there, is a subgroup of GL2R. Okay, so if I chose a different matrix instead of 1110, I'd get a different subgroup. But this is one way of building subgroups out of any group. Okay, so that's enough for this lesson. Um, next time we're going to start our next topic, which is to look at cyclic groups and subgroups in a lot more depth. So until then, we'll catch you later.